Aki on the Boss Man Show here with North Carolina A&T Aggies head coach Sam Washington out of the Big South now. Coach has a big game coming up and with his old MEAC rival, the, the Central Eagles over there out of the MEAC, his old rival coach. How are things over there in Greensboro, man? Everything's good. It's uh, a little warm, but uh, beyond that, everything is pretty good. Good to hear that, Coach. Man, ask you this, man. Um, you guys have not played in over uh, almost two years, played two big games so far. Just tell me how exciting it was for you guys to get on the field again and play competitive football, not against themselves, finally. Finally. You know, I, it was a long time coming, and um, it was a, a, a very long wait, and um, one that um, that uh, we struggled because of it, honestly. I felt uh, we was a lot rested, uh, rustier than I thought we would have been, um, you know, going into the first ball game. And uh, we went in the first ball game with missing 13 starters. Went into this last ball game missing seven. So, uh, but gradually we're getting everybody back on the field. And uh, we hopefully by we get time we get the conference, uh, we'll be a, a viable football team. And coach, let's go a little bit deeper than that. Um, how did you all approach that time not being able to play anybody last year? Because I know guys have the juice as long they want to compete and other guys getting a chance to play. They didn't, get, they didn't get to play. So how did you all approach that for your young men and your staff to keep them guys sharp and prepare for this year coming up? It was very difficult, honestly. Um, and, and we had to do it because we worked in pods. So we couldn't – we never had the full team, you know, to work with. So we had to um, – you know, uh, get a creative, and, and we did a lot of half line stuff. And uh, we work weak side one day, uh, strong side the other, and then on the third day we work inside stuff. So uh, we try to just um, you know keep them uh, busy and in tune. And um, for the most part, I thought they did a very good job with it. And I can only imagine how using last year's experience to help those young men become better young men because I know I'm in my mid-30s, I'm a little older than your guys are, but for me, this last year's made me a better man, a better person. So how would you use that to make your give your chance opportunity to grow as young men and let them know that, hey, this is what life is. If though it's coming your way, and hey, you got to be ready for whatever life throws at you. Absolutely. It's called adversity. And uh, it either makes you stronger or uh, it knock you down. And we as athletes um, use it as a tool you know, to make us stronger. And uh, we, we we welcome adversity. Most definitely, Coach. And talk about this, man. Uh, I know with being off, would you, to kinda, would you kind of help your guys get stronger in the weight room, change your diets, focus on recovery more? Because I know a lot of times young men at age, they don't really value what they put in their bodies. So you have the opportunity yeah. to strength staff to help those young men see, hey, the fuel you put in your body will help you play better on Saturdays. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, that's one of the things that we preach on the regular. And um, I have, I'm proud to say we have a, a new strength conditioning coach and he bought a nutrition package with him. And uh, we do have a training table now. Uh, so um, eating is a huge part of what we do. Uh, it's about refueling the body and uh, rest. It's very important to get the proper rest. So we, those two things that we really have been preaching uh, you know, since returning to campus. Uh, last year, you know, the beauty of it for, from my perspective, we were the only one on campus. So now we have everybody back on campus. So there's a, an addition, a, a distraction. You know, it's uh, very difficult uh, for them to walk around and, and, and not, you know, socialize with, uh, with the population. You know, so, but uh, we're gonna have to remain disciplined and, and do it very wisely. Most definitely, Coach, and I, like you said, man, their recovery process, their nutrition piece, and a lot of times at the HBC level, you, the schools can afford it. The fact that you all have, have that now is so a blessing because I know young men need that HBC level to see how it's done the right way at the high major level. HBCUs, in my mind, should not be a, should not be looked at as beneath those bigger schools because I'm a graduate at Tennessee State, so I know all about it's your HBCU life. So I respect it. So I'm glad to see you guys got to have that. And for your young men to have the opportunity to really get taught how to eat right, how to recover and rest, I think it's a very blessing for your young men and their recovery and their careers going forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's been a big part of uh, um, what we've done here recently. Uh, as you stated, you know, for since we've been here, we, did, we never had a training table. So, um, you know, that in, within itself, I think, going to be a big, uh, help to uh, the program. 
And coach, talk about team camaraderie. Um, this summer, you can have have guys around you all. I mean, last year you couldn't do it on Zoom. Talk about the camaraderie of your team, them growing closer together, and that bond that you all want to have on the football. Because football is ultimate team sport, and they had that great bond, go through adversity together. Talk about that, having them on campus and some of the bond with each other even more. Oh, oh, it's so important, you know, that they bond together, and uh, that's one of the things that we really uh, emphasize over the summer, and that's the purpose of getting them here during the summer. And not only that, you're bringing in a new crop as well. So they have to get acclimated to their, you know, this environment and uh, learn some um, other people uh, along with their, um, their colleagues and players, you know. So um, it, it go hand in hand, I tell you. Um, they have to trust each other. And so we have to do some of the things that, you know, creating some, you know, bonding and uh, camaraderie and, and so that they can gain trust and understand each other. But they all come from different walks of life as well. So um, they have to understand where this person coming from, what they possibly have dealt with, you know, to get to this point. And Coach, talk about, you kind of mentioned recruiting, you come from different backgrounds. You got the Carolinas, Virginia's up there, Georgia down right below you, Florida as well, Tennessee. Talk about being in Greensboro. For the most part, you know, recruiting was fairly easy for us in a sense, um, but it was very difficult with the COVID. You know, one of the things that we did not, uh, we're not able to do is bring the kids in and get to know them on a personal level, you know, because of COVID. And that was missed. That was missed dearly. Um, but however, you know, the, I thought the coaches did a fantastic job. Uh, we have a very good freshman class. Matter of fact, four of them played last week against Duke. And we didn't realize it until after the game. We're like, man, we got freshmen out there playing against a power five team. But they held their own and they did well. And uh, so, you know, those are the things that uh, make it worthwhile and make it enjoyable. You know, when you see a young kid, you know, mature at the rate that these guys have done. And coach, for you going to the Big South, how has that affected recruiting? I know, and I hate to say this, I know they look kids look at the MEAC and say, oh, that's the MEAC. Now you're in the Big South, you got kids look, oh, it's the Big South now. So how has it been recruiting-wise that you moved to the Big South now and playing those schools now? You know, honestly, I haven't heard, I haven't felt any difference. And that's, that's the, the real, uh, you know, I thought it possibly would be an issue, you know, with some kids, but uh, we were still able to recruit those same kids that uh, we, you know, we saw it after. Um, here at A&T is very um, challenging academically, you know, so that's the first thing you got to, you got to find some kids, kids that can handle, you know, the academic side of it and uh, the challenges because uh, kids here compete in the classroom. And so, but uh, I was proud. Uh, the freshman class came in with a 3.2 GPA average. Wonderful. Hey, that, that is what it's all about because, as you and I both know, at some point, them cleats get, have to be hung up. So you have to be successful in your major, have a good major that will make that sustain you for the rest of your life because I major in business and I got a radio show out of major in business at Tennessee State. So I, I didn't think I'd be in communications, but I am. So having that business degree helped give me that base to do there what I go. do now. So if I'm going to test one of any young men out there, hey, Go to school, handle your business. It'll you'll come in handy down the road after them kids get hung up for sure. You're absolutely correct. I think we, uh, you know, we emphasize you need to compete in the classroom as well, because uh, that that job offer is it's going to be those same kids that you sit next to applying for that same job you want. So you need to start competing just like you do on the field, uh, just like you're trying to win a football game. You got to win in the classroom. Oh, definitely. And Coach, I'm asking about yourself personally, Coach. Um, at what point in your career did you decide you want to become a head coach and help lead young men and make an impact on, on their lives? <laughs> I tell you what, I was thinking it sooner than the opportunity presented itself. But uh, you know what? I have no absolutely no regrets. You know, I was a defense coordinator uh, for many, many, many years before I became a head coach. And, um, and I really love that side of it, too. The, uh, it's dealing with the X's and O's and uh, – student athletes on a personal level where you see them every day, you know, in the meetings, you know, constantly. Um, and so you, you develop a real close bond, you know, as a position coach, you know, whereas um, uh, the head coach is more of a um, overseeing um, duty uh, responsibility and making sure that everybody is on the same page. And uh, so you don't get as much, you know, one-on-one -on -one, uh, with the kids. Now, that I do miss. I hear that. And you know what? And, you know, having a dad as a coach, um, 
I, I, I didn't want to go into the profession. I, I just know that my children ain't good enough for that coach. You know, I started cursing kids out. I, it's not good. So I told my, <laughs> told my dad it wasn't, wasn't my path. But, uh, you know, I respect what you all do because having a, over 100 kids look after as, as your own children, like somebody, somebody's young man, you are their father. You know, they don't have that at home. So talk about that, being a coach at an HBCU school, having a lot of young black men trapping and raised me and become better men and husbands in society once they leave your program. I think it's a gift. It's, it's a gift God gave to me, you know, to have that opportunity to be able to give and direct and mentor uh, young men and guide them in the right way and showing them, you know, um, it, it, it can be done. Because a lot of the kids that we, uh, you know, have not sure about their future and don't have no idea what they want to do when they leave college, you know, or uh, when they uh, earn a degree. And then there's some that's not going, you know, that didn't earn a degree that still can uh, produce and be um, viable to uh, society. And so I, I honestly believe it's a gift. The Lord allowed me. He allows me uh, to do that. Most definitely. And coach, I feel like going to HBCU schools, man, is just such a blessing for a young man because I, you feel at home because the people there understand you and your background, where you come from. I know I came from a situation where I wasn't had had the most very marginalized community here in Atlanta, you know, I, but I overcame that and look where I am today. So going to Tennessee State, I felt that love and affection for me, the people that are on campus to help me, foster me to become a better man. And I think a lot of young black men should choose HBCU schools, whether it be Tennessee State, a and wherever, because they're going to let people understand them and really love them for who they are and are going to help them become better in this world we're in today. Absolutely. You know, and I, I think when I recognize that the most is on Father's Day. On Father's Day, the number of calls and, and texts I receive, it's amazing. You know, guys just saying, Coach, thank you. And they be thanking me for little small things that I may have said or may have done that I had totally forgotten about. And uh, But it was impactful uh, to them and uh, maybe just what they needed at that moment. Um, so, uh, uh, again, it's a blessing that uh, I sit in this seat and um, able to uh, guide young African black males, you know, to uh, victory. Uh, on in and outside uh, the classroom and the football field. That's what I'm for coach is, man. Uh, when you come to Atlanta, coach, to the recruiter for any events to visit, what's your favorite, favorite spot to eat here in town, man? Uh, Gladys. Gladys, I love going over there. Uh, that's one of my favorite. And um, it's a seafood joint. I don't know what's the name of it. Papa Do's. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Papa knows, yes. I, I don't know the name, but I know where two locations are. I can get to two of those. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, hey, Coach. But I will tell you, there are some more for you. Raise on the river. That's Creole food. Six, okay. six, six feet under. The name is terrible, but it's two locations in Grant Park and 11th Avenue. Six feet under and Raise on the river. You will enjoy that and the juicy crab as well, Coach. So that's your seafood. Those three Thanks. spots for you. All right, Bob. I certainly will remember that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Coach Wash, thank you for your time you, to, to tonight, Coach. Absolutely. And we'll do this again real soon. Best luck to get Central and uh, hope you a great year and be healthy and be safe. I'll talk to you real soon, Coach. Thank you so very much. Enjoy. Have a great night now. Uh, you as well.